From Godzilla's beginning, there have always been elements of Godzilla that are just horrifying to be seen. From the original's nuclear destruction to Shin Godzilla's unlimited evolution, horror has always tried to find its way into Godzilla. Some may say that a few Godzilla movies are in the horror genre, <coughs> minus one, <coughs> but there has never been anything to that degree of paranormal activity, Saw, Five Nights at Freddy's, or even the Mandela catalog. Except Godzilla minus one. That is nothing official. The man in the suit. 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 Let me introduce you to something horrifyingly amazing. Something unique in the vast landscape that is analog horror. Something that is Godzilla with a horrifying twist. The man in the suit, made by unknowingly. So far, this series has had ten amazing episodes with no sign of stopping soon. I would highly recommend that you go actually watch the videos instead of watching this one. If anyone deserves views from this series, it's not me, it's unknowingly. I will only be recapping these episodes, but the real experience is you watching them in a dark room with no one else in the house. Behind you. With that out of the way... Video 1, Godzilla Suit Incident, 1954. For the filming of the original 1954 Godzilla movie, Toho decided to not use stop motion for the movie like many other monster movies at the time, because of time and budget restraints. Instead, they made a suit an actor would wear to film the scenes as Godzilla. The people behind the movie named this suit Goji. The person they hired to play Godzilla is, as of now, unknown. After he wore the suit, he fell in love with wearing it. He was in that thing so much, barely anyone even saw his face. On breaks, he kept the suit on. When it got unbearably hot in the suit, he refused to take it off. It was, and I quote, Like he was addicted to the suit. Like if it was calling his name. He even brought the suit home with him, although Toho kinda forbid him from doing that. After a while, he barely spoke while in the suit. When he did, he would refer to himself as Goji. One one in the the same. Same. This type of behavior would continue until one day while filming a scene with Godzilla attacking Tokyo, the man just stopped. Several minutes would go by until he started to move again. He would just walk for a little bit and then stop. The crew could tell that his breathing was odd, even though it was muffled by the suit. The director thought that this was just a practical joke and told the man to get back to work, but he stood still. A few minutes would pass until they decided to take him out of the suit. They went to the back of the suit, where the man would enter the suit and start to open it. But something was wrong. They saw that his body was now deformed. It almost seemed to be growing in the suit. Like it was filling the suit. It, it was, was his destiny. destiny. When they tried to take the suit off of him, the man's skin would rip with the suit. They stopped. This is what they expected. One in the same. 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 And this, this is what they found. Video two: The Angier Suit Incident, 1955. Because of the success of the original Godzilla movie, one year later Toho decided to make a sequel and the man in the suit would come along as well. Why would Toho keep him around? The most likely answer would be money. The original suit cost a fortune to make. If the man in the suit would cooperate, which he was after the first suit incident, why not save money and keep him around? Before the filming started, they also had some private doctors examine him. They had to be private because if this information got out to the public, 
Toho would be in huge trouble and most likely shut down. After various tests, the doctor concluded that the man in the suit took some unknown drug. This caused his body to morph into the suit, melting, becoming one with the suit. Even the man's bones rearranged itself to match the suit. The doctors also concluded, although the suit's eyes were now bloodshot, the man could see out of them. Since by this time no one knew the man's real name, everyone just referred to him as the man in the suit. For the second movie, Toho wanted Godzilla to fight a new monster, Anguirus. They made an Anguirus costume as well. The man who acted as Anguirus is unknown. He was unnerved by the man in the suit, even though he was unaware of what the man in the suit was. Although the situation was odd, filming went smoothly. By this time, the man in the suit had lost his vocal cords through his mutation, but still could make noise. Only noise. Everything changed when they started to film the final scene. For unknown reasons, while filming this scene, which was a fight between Godzilla and Anguirus, in the middle of the battle, the man in the suit bit Anguirus' neck right where the suit actor's head is. This was not part of the script. Was that the bite of 87? No, this was the bite of 55. And you cannot stop me from calling it that, because I will call it that. The man in the Angier suit would yell for help for a few minutes, and then silence. He stopped moving. The crew tried to get over to the unconscious man to help him, but the man in the suit would not let them. He would roar. Roar aggressively at anyone who got close. Then suddenly the Anguirus actor woke up. He started to shake violently and started to breathe heavily. They feared what they knew was happening. The man in the suit stopped guarding the actor. They immediately tried to take the actor out of the Anguirus suit to no success. This is what they expected. This is what they found. The words above him translated to, help me. Video 3. Godzilla Encounter. 1962. The text at the beginning translates to, why are we with them? Which is appropriate for this episode. After the bite of 55, it became extremely risky to use the man in the suit again. But Toho made them use him anyways. The third film was going to be the first in color. Not only that, but Toho, through shady means, got King Kong to be the second monster in this movie. King Kong vs. Godzilla is what they decided to name this film. When they started to film this one, there was immediately a problem. The man in the suit seemed to hate anything related to America. He seemed to especially hate the King Kong suit, even if a Japanese person named Shoichi was in it. When Americans were around the man in the suit, he would roar at them and try to hurt them. Toho had to treat the man in the suit like a lion at a zoo when Americans were around. At this point, we meet a new character. He was the cameraman for the movie. He was told about the man in the suit and the bite of 55. And if he ever told anyone about this, he would be fired and arrested. Despite that, he felt like people needed to know. He is the one making these videos for us. He doesn't reveal his face or name to keep himself safe, so I will call him Phil. Why? Because Phil seems like a nice name. Phil also could tell another thing was angering the man in the suit. Toho wanted the man in the suit to be more appealing to a younger audience. Everything went fine until the final scene. The final fight. King Kong and Godzilla were fighting. The man in the suit would grab Shoichi in the middle of the scene and fall into the water with him. Phil was forced to film all of it. There was a struggle between the two for several minutes until the man in the suit rose out of the water. Shoichi didn't. This made Phil feel sick to his stomach. The other cameraman backed away from the man in the suit. Phil needed fresh air. He started to walk through the long corridors of Toho Studios looking for an exit. He stopped when he heard screaming from the room with the man in the suit. Then the power went out. Phil started to use the flash of his camera to get around the place. He heard footsteps behind him. He took a picture thinking it was an employee. It was not an employee. The text on the photo translates to traitor. Video 4, Depiction of Growth, 1962. 
Phil survived the encounter with the man in the suit without a single scratch. This made Phil so curious that he did not care if he got hurt anymore in the process of finding out answers. Phil has a friend he thought would be interested in the man in the suit. We will call her Elisa. Phil was right. After studying the information Phil gave her, she found some interesting, terrifying things. The man in the suit didn't use a drug to fuse with the suit. He fused with the suit because of some type of radiation. The man and the suit are becoming one entity. It seems to be making the man lose his humanity, making him turn into a creature, an animal. Soon the suit's teeth will be his teeth. The suit's tail will be his tail. The man's eyes are no longer human. The mutation does not have an end. He will continue to mutate until he dies. <laughs> Shin Godzilla much? Alyssa told Phil to get an artist to draw what he saw. So he did, but he isn't so good at speaking Japanese, so he accidentally got three pictures. Video 5 Suit Trials or Suit Trial or Trial Suit? One of those three. 1958. Sometime after Phil's first man in the suit encounter, he decided to snoop around Toho. He found a tape labeled Conformity Test. This takes place sometime after the Bite of 55. The title in the beginning of the tape translates to Trial of the Suit. This tape cannot be viewed. Do not share this tape. The beginning, a woman is talking. This part is actually extremely interesting. I myself don't speak Japanese, so I don't know what she's really saying. But on the video, there are captions that Phil made. And he said that they could be inaccurate, but the captions are also in the description. But they are a bit different than the one in the actual video. For now, I'll just read what is on the actual video. We are fully aware of the situation we are in. We will do our best to test what they need to hear so they can listen. We will try to do some audio tests. Let's start with the man in the suit. We will have him in a cell. Make sure he is there until you can train him. He destroyed the light and only the darkness. But that's okay. The camera has night vision. The woman took a note out for NAF Pizzeria Simulator and played three noises. The last one getting a reaction out of the man in the suit. A scream. Then he disappeared. The woman's voice starts to repeat one thing over and over again. Then the man in the suit slowly comes out of the shadows, staring right into the camera. You can hear a quote from Oppenheimer. Video 6 Mailed Message, 1962 Phil was mailed a strange tape. He believes it isn't made by Toho. The video had a message on it. You do not understand. You killed my family. You Americans cheered when we lost. We lost our homes. We lost our families. You nuked us. The nuke took my wife. The nuke took my kids. Hiroshima was our home. I left for a business trip. You took everything from me. So I decided to return to peace by getting rid of the people who wronged us. All while having scenes of Godzilla 1954 play, along with a humming noise that fades in slowly and fades out slowly twice. At the end it shows an iconic scene of Godzilla over a mountain, but then he just disappears as if he had escaped the movie. Then a silhouette of the man in the suit is shown, and it is shown again, but with a bunch of sharp teeth possibly what will happen to the man in the suit. Video 7, Dorsal Extraction, 1962. Later, Phil got two more things in the mail. It said that it was mailed from Toho, but it was sloppy and unprofessional. The first was a note that said no one from Toho sent this. The second was a letter. This letter said Phil was fired for telling the public through the videos he was making. Although he was no longer employed by Toho, he was not done with the man in the suit. While he worked at Toho, he made a friend. For security reasons, Phil did not tell us what the friend's name is. So I guess I can call him Gary. Gary has agreed to be Phil's spy for now. He was snooping around Toho and found a tape labeled Dorsal Extraction. 
He delivered this tape to Phil. When Phil played the tape for us, we saw this. The first Japanese phrase was translated correctly to we will try to get him out of the suit. But the second one is translated to we are unsure if this is going to work. But the Japanese actually said we have to help him out. It then shows this video. He is very cooperative. We thought it would hurt him, but it didn't. The results are fantastic. Fascinating. Fascinating. Then it shows them removing the dorsal plates. Evolution. Evolution. Mutation. Mutation. The tape ended there, but Phil was told that two minutes later, the man in the suit would attack the cameraman. While he was trying to escape, he took pictures with a camera that had a flash, which hurt the man in the suit's eyes. It is unknown if the cameraman escaped. Here are the photos. Video 8. Angure Suit. 1956. Phil has been looking for one specific tape. Gary finally found this tape. This tape is about the man in the Angure suit. The video was short and was only someone talking. The person said, We have tried our best to comply with the other person who mutated in the suit, but his persistence hurts our finances. People want to see him, but he didn't want to be seen. He didn't, he didn't want this. this. He wanted, he to, wanted be to be human. human. Gary knew more than what the video said. They wanted to make another movie with both men in the suits. They tried to comply with the man in the Angura suit, like training a dog to do tricks, but he wasn't like the man in the suit. He didn't want to do it. They took a photo of them trying to train him. They were going to use force on him with tasers and such, but Gary said that there was a different movie in the works now, involving Godzilla fighting a giant moth. This ended with a photo of a moth. Video 9, Rare Newspaper, 1964. In this video, Phil said he tried to drop all of this, but he is scared that if he attempts to leave Japan, he would just be arrested. He has gone too far into the rabbit hole. Now he is stuck until the end. Phil has found out that the man in the suit escaped. Freedom. Phil has found out that the man in the suit escaped while filming the new movie. Gary didn't tell him this. He saw it in the newspaper. There were two stories about this in the news. The first was about a couple driving home. The man was a photographer and thought taking pictures of the road at night would inspire his next project. He took a few photos. One had the man in the suit in it. The second story is about a young boy. Late at night, he happens to look out his window and saw Godzilla from the movies Home and His Dad watches. He quickly grabbed his camera and ran outside. The boy was interviewed the next day for the news. He said this, I know what Godzilla looks like. That was not Godzilla. His skin looked fake, but real. I thought it might have been someone in a costume, but the face kept changing. That could have been due to my lack of sleep at the time. He did remember one face, so he drew it for the news. It really looks like an alternate of Godzilla from the Mandela catalog. Toho covered this up successfully by saying this was just a promotion for an upcoming Godzilla movie. They also somehow kept any more copies of the story from getting printed. Phil had no clue how the man in the suit escaped, or for how long, or even if Toho got the man in the suit back. A moth was at the end of the video again. Video 10 Mosura Suit Incident, 1964 Gary told Phil the full story on how the man in the suit got out. The man in the suit was not kept in a good condition. They lathered his body in some type of plastic that made him look shiny. The man in the suit was forced to wear contacts that were glossy enough to hide his bloodshot eyes. Toho forced him to get dragged around and withstand high wind conditions. He was treated like a circus animal. Before making the new Godzilla movie, Toho upped the security because of the bite of 55 and the King Kong incident. Even with that, they decided it was best to not have anyone in a suit for this movie, but instead use a moth puppet called Mothra. When they started filming the movie, the man in the suit believed that Mothra was another man in the suit due to how lifelike the puppeteers were making Mothra move. Despite this, they had another problem. The Mothra larvae that were in the film were suits, and they needed to film a scene with the man in the suit. Although this was dangerous, the suits did have plenty of room in them to move out of the way of a bite. 
and had security ready to step in if something happened. Because of this, a female actor decided to volunteer to go in the suit. Since this was her first acting gig, her parents came to watch the filming. Everything went fine for a time, until the man in the suit snapped. He lunged towards Mothra and bit the moth puppet. After a little bit, the man in the suit realized that the moth was not a suit and went berserk. He went straight for the larva with the woman in it. He bit into the suit, but the woman ducked down. That did not matter in the end. The man in the suit just bit deeper into the suit, eventually biting her head. Her parents saw everything. Frantically, they tried to get the man in the suit off of her. The man in the suit mauled them to death. Similar to the bite of 55, in the bite of 64, yes, you cannot stop me, the man in the suit tried to protect the woman in the larva suit. Using tasers, they got the man in the suit to get it off of her. This made him even more angry. In a fit of rage, the man in the suit rampaged through security and escaped. The men went to try to get the woman out of the suit. A few other people were told to go and find the man in the suit. Gary was part of the group that went to find the man in the suit. It took an hour of searching to find him. Within that hour, the two encounters in the news happened. When they found him, he was in a forest. He looked calm, maybe even at peace. peace. As soon as he saw the men trying to catch him, all the peace was gone. Never forget. By the time the man in the suit saw the men trying to catch him, he was already surrounded. The man in the suit then suddenly started to shake violently. It was almost as if he was vibrating. Then the man in the suit started to vomit a red liquid in a similar fashion to Godzilla's atomic breath. The red liquid was most likely the man's blood, except that it was boiling. Despite the risk, the men did capture the man in the suit and headed back to Toho Studios, leaving behind a pool of the man's blood. They were all scared to find out what happened to the woman. After putting the man in the suit in a secure place, they expected the woman to be merged with the larva suit. Instead, she became a cocoon. Rebirth. Although, that's just a story at face value. The Hidden Story In each video, there are hidden elements that reveal more of what the man in the suit is. Each video has a description in Japanese. After translating them, it seems to be the man in the suit talking. Some of the videos also have glitches, Japanese text, and falsely translated Japanese that helps with putting the story together. In the Godzilla suit incident, the description tells what the man in the suit was thinking at the time. Godzilla may be a monster, but it seems different to me. He is rather a god. Control our world according to each order, and I will be the meat of the beast. I will be the host of Godzilla, because I want to be a god who is respected by people. I want to be the meat of this beast, and the fear of which one is wrong. I'm not a movie monster. It's Goji, the law of good and evil. I will live in this beast, because he is the only one who can help us. There is no god, just me, Goji. From that, we find out that the man in the suit is truly becoming Godzilla. All the way to calling himself Goji. Not only is he Goji, but from how he is talking, it seems he has done this to himself. In the actual video, there is a glitch that puts some text in Japanese on screen for just one millisecond. This translates to Godzilla may be a monster, but I wonder if it's natural for me to be, and to be in the body of this giant, so I can be one with him. This sounds like Goji talking again. It shows his descent into madness, but we don't quite know why. They did this to us. Yet. The second video is the one with Angiers becoming like Goji. This one had, in my opinion, the most interesting description. Soon an army will rise, an army that I created. A military that shows what happens when there is a nuclear war. They will end up with the same creatures they created with the nuclear bomb. The truth will be known to others, and soon my family will be avenged. They will understand that we will not resign. I am not afraid of anyone. I am not afraid of weapons. I am not afraid of bombs. I, Goji. Please help me. Please help me. What's wrong? Please help me. Please help me. Why does my body hurt? Why can't I talk? Can't I talk? It hurts. Please help me. Please help me. Please help me. How can I see what happened? 
Will my daughter be okay? Help me. Why can't you hear me? Help. I do not speak. Please help me. Please help me. Please, God. There is no God. Who are you? And what do you want from me? I would like you to participate. Why is it so painful? I can't get out of the suit. Calm down. You are one with the suit. Why? Why? Please help me. Someone please listen to me. And only to me. You were not chosen for no reason. I heard you lost your daughter. Did your daughter die in a bomb? Don't worry. I will heal you. I will make you whole again. I'll help you, but only if you help me. Do you want revenge for your daughter? For your son? For his wife who died without any remorse? Who, who are you? This is Goji. Only Goji. This one is so interesting to me because Goji and the other men are communicating. Not through speech, but through their connection with their suits. There's also a flash of the- Then at the end, when they're showing what they found in the Angir suit, there is text that translates to help me. Which gives more proof to the man in the Angir suit not wanting this, unlike Goji, who has fully embraced it. From here on out, the descriptions get smaller and smaller, possibly symbolizing Goji's decline in mental capacity as he becomes more animal-like. You know nothing. The description for the King Kong video was, We were supposed to make a movie about what happened. About what they did. What they did to my family. What they did to me. Oh, filthy traitors. I didn't pour my soul into this carcass to be entertainment. And with those who killed my family. Betrayer. From this, we started to see Goji's life story. We already know that Goji hates Americans. We now see why. The video that got mailed to Phil about a businessman's family dying in Hiroshima with only the father surviving on a business trip seems to be Goji's story. It also reinforces that he wanted to be fused with the suit. The text at the end translates to traitor. Seeing that Goji was staring at Phil and all the things that have happened to Phil up to this point, I think it's safe to say that Phil is either an American or Japanese who was born or moved to America. The fourth video, the one where Phil talks to Alyssa about Goji, has the description of I am not a monster. I will help all of you. I will kill those who wronged me, those who murdered my family, and those who supported them. You people, you murdered my family. Monsters. It seems that Goji wants to kill anyone who is associated with America. He fused with the suit to do this, and with the conclusion that he is mutating because of radiation, he seems to be using his enemy's own weapon against them. Now in the fifth video, the one where they do the FNAF Pizzeria Simulator thing, the description says, Why should I listen to him? Most likely talking about the voice being played. Also, the description's captions is different from the video's captions. Changing through me to hear so they can change him, to they need to hear so they can listen, A to the, and we have a light to the camera has night vision. In video 6, the first video sent to Phil, the description was, you took everything from me. This is most likely a direct message to Phil. Seeing that he has some sort of relationship to America, the scene where Godzilla disappears from the video most likely symbolizes that Goji believes he has become Godzilla. In the seventh video, the video where they attempt to take the suit off of Goji, it has the description of, In the dark, I am beautiful. Showing a possible way to pacify him. Seeing he let them remove some of the suit while he was in the dark, and attack the cameraman possibly because of the flash of a camera, it does seem that darkness does pacify him. In the ninth video, the one where Goji escaped, the description says, This place. The open air. The car. The windows. The house. Did they just move on? Will we forget? This is once again Goji. 
He talked about the car with the couple in it and the house that the kid lives in. This almost sounds like he is beginning to question if he even wants revenge anymore. He seems to be ready to move on until Toho captured him once again. When he says we, he's talking about all of Japan, not just himself anymore. Showing that he is starting to move on from the bombing of Japan. In the 10th video, the Mothra video, the description is one word. Rebirth. This probably refers to how the woman turned into a cocoon, hinting that unlike the past two mutations, this one will create a whole new being. The Timeline. Now it's time for a timeline of the man in the suit so far. It all starts back in 1945, when a man who would be later known as Goji had to leave his wife and kids in Hiroshima and go on a business trip. While away, America would bomb Japan with two nukes, one hitting Hiroshima, killing Goji's entire family. Over the next nine years, Goji would have rage against America building in him for those years, becoming an actor for Toho, getting hired to play Godzilla in an upcoming monster movie, and possibly learning a way to fuse with the suit to become a new creature. Once filming began in 1954, Goji would become attached to the suit in a strange way, almost never taking the suit off. Towards the end of the filming, Goji would start acting strange in the suit. When they tried to take the suit off of Goji, they would find that he had fused with the suit. Sometime between the crew finding out what happened to Goji in 1954 and the filming of the second Godzilla movie in 1955, the company who made the Godzilla movies, Toho, hired scientists to examine the man in the suit. They came to many conclusions. They said that he took a drug that caused him to fuse with the suit, which was not true. They found that Goji had lost his vocal cords and could only make animal-like noises. His bones have rearranged themselves to fit in the suit and he could see out of the suit's eyes, which were now bloodshot. Toho felt that they could still use the man as an actor in the next Godzilla movie, though. In 1955, they would hire another man to act in a different monster suit to fight Godzilla in the next movie. This man filmed with Goji to create the second Godzilla movie. Towards the end of filming, Goji would bite into the suit actor's head while inside the suit, causing the actor to fuse with the suit. The two could somehow talk to one another telepathically, in which it is revealed that the actor is scared and feels an immense amount of pain. He does not want to be in the suit, he wants to see his daughter, which is not clear if she died in Hiroshima or is still alive. In 1956, Toho would try to get the man in the Angier suit to act in another movie. But all he wanted to do was be human again, which was no longer possible. We would not hear or see Anguirus again. In 1958, Toho would run some tests on Goji by playing audio. This audio would get a strange reaction out of Goji, although this did not help Toho control him anymore. In 1962, Toho would try to make Goji more family friendly and would have him act in a movie with an American monster, King Kong. Because of Goji's hatred of America and his connection to Hiroshima, he would not be happy with these changes. At the same time, Toho would hire someone I call Philip. He was the cameraman for the film. In the last scene of the movie, Goji would grab King Kong and drown the actor to death. Phil would walk out feeling sick, while Goji killed all the other people in the room. The lights would go out and Goji would make his way to Phil, in which Phil used a flash to take a picture of Goji and get away. From later behavior, it seems that Goji can be stunned with the flash. Later, Phil would tell everything he knew about Goji to his friend Alyssa, who found some information. First, a drug didn't change Goji, radiation did, and his mutation will not stop until he is dead. Sometime later, Phil would get a package in the mail containing a tape. This tape told him the backstory of Goji, almost as if he made the video. But how could he in the state he was in? A few days later, Phil would get another package. It would tell him that he was being fired from Toho. Although he was being fired, he kept in close contact with a friend he made while working at Toho. We will call this friend Gary. Gary became a spy for Phil. Throughout the next few weeks, Gary would find more information about Goji and the Angura suit. While filming the fourth Godzilla movie, Toho decided to use a puppet moth for the monster Godzilla would be fighting. Although they used a puppet for the Mothra larva, they used actors in suits. Goji would try to bite the moth, realizing that it was fake and go berserk. He would then bite one of the larvas with a person in it. The woman's parents were there and tried to get him off of her. Goji killed both the mother and father. 
The security at the filming tased Goji to get him off the woman, which was successful, and in a fit of rage, Goji broke out of the studio and fled into the wild. While he was loose, he ran into a woman and a man in a car driving by, and a kid who jumped out of his bed to go see Godzilla in the street. Both of these incidents were later shown in the newspaper. Toho covered them up by saying this was just a stunt to promote their next Godzilla film. About an hour after he escaped, a group of men found him in the woods, just looking at nature. They then tried to capture him when all of a sudden he started to vibrate violently and spit out boiling blood almost as if it was his own version of an atomic breath. After they did capture him, they took him back to Toho Studios where they found the woman was not merged with the suit but instead turned into some sort of cocoon. And that's the entire story of this series so far, obviously with some smaller details skipped over to make it just a summary of the show. Now with the timeline laid out, it's time to get to theorizing. The film theory, I mean the theories, this is not film theory. Now with all the research I did into this series, I see three possibilities on what is happening. Each theory is different, but they have some similar aspects that are theories in of themselves. First is that Toho killed Angiris because he was not working with them. Phil is an American that was hired by Toho. Goji wanted to fuse with the suit. Toho has nothing to do with the actual fusing, but Toho is an extremely greedy company. The world is slightly different from ours, not counting the obvious differences. Toho is the one who has been keeping these monsters and experimenting on them. Toho only removed parts of Goji's skin to replace it to make Goji look different in each movie to keep suspicion away. All those are sub-theories that are pillars that these three big theories lay on. Theory 1. The suit is alive. Goji didn't seek revenge before the Godzilla suit incident. He was hurting from the loss of his family nine years ago, but Goji just wanted to move on. He quit his previous job to try new and exciting things. To truly live his life were the ones he had lost. It just happened he was trying to become an actor at the time the Gojira movie was going to be made. Maybe he got the job due to his connection to Hiroshima, maybe he was just a great actor, or maybe he just got lucky. Either way, he got the acting job as Godzilla himself. The first few times wearing the suit, everything was normal. He put it on, did his job, and then took it off. Sometime during filming, he started to feel great in the suit. He became addicted to the suit. Almost like the hand didn't talk to me. He somehow felt closer to his family in the suit. He would start to keep it on longer and longer until he never took it off. During this time, he might have started to hear a voice. Now, what this voice is could be a slew of different things. This could be a demon trying to get Goji to be his puppet. This could be the suit which gained consciousness from the pain of Hiroshima, kind of like GMK. This could be Goji's own hidden feelings possessing the suit, or his consciousness taking on a form of its own. Either way, it told Goji things. It convinced him that the Americans needed to pay for the pain he and many others felt. Once Goji was fully convinced that he could, no, he should be the one to do this, Goji began to fuse with the suit. There was no pill or radiation, just something supernatural, something powerful enough to get vengeance. Possibly pure hatred or something along those FNAF lines. Goji would try to make more creatures like him. But when he did this, they didn't want this fate. They wouldn't believe in his mission. They wouldn't even believe that they were chosen. This is when Goji realized that if he couldn't find anyone else with the same motivation as him, he would have to make someone. Unfortunately, the next suit that Goji would come face to face with was King Kong, an American monster. This sent Goji into a rage, finally using his newly gained power to take some vengeance on the Americans. He would eventually get to another suit, and when he did, instead of transforming them, Goji would force this person to be reborn. Or maybe that was never his goal. Maybe this metamorphosis was due to Goji being separated from this person. Well, after he was separated and escaped Toho, Goji started to find peace again. The voice that he had been listening to was fading as he looked at nature. That all stopped when he saw people again. Goji remembered the pain. He could feel the pain. The voice was back, and a new mutation was about to happen. One that would lead to Goji's true power. One more thing. Goji would be the one who was sending the packages to Phil. Since he would no longer be human, the bad handwriting and unprofessional packaging would be explained by him learning to use his new limbs. 
theory two, Goji did this to himself. My second theory has no supernatural elements, just a person consumed with so much grief that he turned himself into a monster trying to make the pain fade away. After Hiroshima, Goji was never the same. He barely showed up to his job getting him fired. He was skipped meals and barely left his house. He had no family, no friends, no reason to live. The Americans did this to him. It's all their fault. Goji knew he would soon get kicked out of his home, but he had no reason to care. The only reason why he was still not with his family was to see the Americans get what they deserved. But that never happened. After seeing a job listing to act as Godzilla, a creature that was created by nuclear bombs, Goji saw opportunity. He could get hired and use the same radiation that killed his family to become Godzilla, and finally get his revenge. Goji knew that this was a long shot, but hey, if this didn't work, he would finally be back with his family. Maybe that's what he truly wanted. He would bring the suit back to his house and dose himself in radiation while wearing the suit in an attempt to fuse with it and become Gojira. He would wear the suit as much as possible to make sure he would fuse with it, and start to refer to himself as Goji. During filming one day, he started to feel weird. He might have thought that it was finally time to see his family again, but instead his plan worked. He and the suit were one. Over the next few years, the radiation would twist and turn Goji's body, ripping him apart and putting him back together. For some time, he would still be the same person, but slowly the radiation would make its way to his brain. His thoughts would become shorter and less complicated. His movements and actions would become more animal-like. Through all of this, he would be motivated by one emotion that would never fade from Goji. Anger. Anger at the Americans, which would eventually turn into anger at the world after seeing how everyone just moved on. Of course, as most creatures do, Goji would try to find companionship by mutating other people in kaiju suits to create more like himself. By biting other people, he could spread the radiation that made him and create more like him. Goji somehow got a psychic connection with the first person he bit. He would tell this person that he was chosen. But all the person wanted to do was see his daughter one more time. Goji would insist that his daughter was killed in Hiroshima, and that together they could get revenge. But that was not true, and the other person knew this. Or maybe his daughter was killed and this second man thought he was about to see her again. Later, Goji, out of rage at seeing Kong, would kill a big portion of the King Kong vs. Godzilla crew, including Kong only leaving Phil alive because he stunned Goji with a flash of the camera, which would later be shown more and more as a weakness of Goji. By the time of the next movie, Goji had lost a big portion of himself, with more of his anger taking over. This anger would really show when he bit Mothra and realized it was not a suit. He went into a rage, bit someone in a larva suit, and escaped. He would find a place in nature, and for the first time in a really long time, it made the anger in his heart fade. When he saw men surrounding him, it triggered the memory of Hiroshima bringing all of his anger back, which caused a huge mutation to take place. The mutation gave him a strange version of Godzilla's atomic breath. Back at Toho, because of the radiation in Goji evolving him, the woman became a cocoon instead of just fusing with the suit, making her become a completely new being. Something much different than Goji, something possibly made from fear rather than anger. Something that might oppose Goji. Once again, Goji was the one who sent the package to Phil, except this time, the messiness of the packages would be proof of his mind being de-evolved. Theory 3. Goji is not alone. Goji didn't fuse with the suit due to supernatural forces or by radiating himself, but rather there is another character yet to be revealed that has been helping him this entire time. Maybe even controlling Goji. This man is someone high up in Toho, maybe even the director of Gojira. This man found Goji and made a deal with him. Goji would let this man turn him into a monster as long as he could get revenge on America, and keep a strong message about the bombings in the Godzilla movies. Goji thought that this man wanted America to suffer as well, but did he really want that? Or did he just want to bring more pain into a world that is already consumed by it? He would handpick the suit actor of Anguirus due to his daughter dying in Hiroshima. The actor wasn't given a choice in becoming a monster like Goji, and because of this, he wasn't cooperative like Goji is. He just wanted to be human, to have his life back. Because of this, the man killed Angiris. Now seeing that Goji was one of a kind, he wanted to see what Goji would do when faced with an American-made thing. The outcome was less than desirable. Goji did kill the actor of Kong, 
but he also killed everyone else in the room except for one person, Phil. The man knew this could be a problem. So he sent the video telling the backstory of the man who went on a business trip during Hiroshima. Initially, most people would think this could be the backstory of Goji, but for this theory, I think it's the backstory of this third person, for multiple reasons. First, at this point, Goji wouldn't have the opportunity to create a video, let alone send it out in the mail. Second, while Goji does have a hatred for Americans, we don't have any definitive proof that this video showed the story of Goji. Third, the person in the video is said to be a businessman who went on a trip, much like how directors will go to different locations to film a movie. Fourth, at the end, Godzilla disappears from the film, as if Goji was always something in the background until this man transformed him, almost as if he took Godzilla out of the movie and into the real world. As the series goes on, this man slowly loses his grip on Goji, most likely because of the way Goji has been treated. This would result in Goji escaping and the cocoon existing. Now, whether any of those loose theories are correct, where could the series go next? Well, I have a few ideas. Specifically about the cocoon. Seeing that the next Godzilla movie in the series is Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, the cocoon could end up hatching into a King Ghidorah. This would be a twist seeing that the cocoon came from a Mothra larva, but the cocoon could also become a Rodan or a Mothra larva for the same reason. I really don't see it turning into a Mothra larva. My best guess would be it turning into a moth, but that doesn't really fit in with the upcoming Godzilla movies in the series. But what if it turned into another Godzilla? Going with the third theory, the man could have messed with the larva somehow to make a person turn into a replacement Godzilla, with Goji becoming too unpredictable to control anymore. My final idea, probably the most horrifying, you know, unless the cocoon hatches to reveal a King Ghidorah that will leave a trail of its own blood wherever it goes, is that the cocoon will hatch into some bloodthirsty fleshy monster. That's it. That's the end of this section. I am done being MadPad now. Criticism. Now, I love this series, but there are some things that bug me, especially with me being the huge Godzilla nerd I am. First, we do know who wore the original Godzilla suit, Haruo Nakashima, and no, he was not fused with the Godzilla suit. He acted as Godzilla for his first 21 films and many other monsters for years. He eventually died in 2017 at the ripe old age of 88 because of ammonia, which is an infection in the lungs. Not only that, but the original Godzilla suit was deadly. The suit was actually two separate suits. The first had to be cut in half to be worn at all because it was unbearably hot and way too heavy to wear. The second suit was lighter but it was still 220 pounds. There was very few scenes with the full Gojira suit being used. Along with that, in most Godzilla movies, Godzilla looks vastly different from previous designs. I used to see the first two being the same costume, even though in reality it was not, but the third movie vastly changed Godzilla's appearance. I do have an explanation for all of this. First off, this series could just take place in an alternate universe that is more different than ours than I first expected. This would not explain the suit changing though, as four different Godzilla suits are shown. In the dorsal extraction video, they took off parts of the suit. Toho could have been changing the suit on Goji piece by piece, until the suit looked different to keep the public in the dark. They could have even hired Haruo as the public figure of Godzilla, while keeping the public in the dark about Goji. I became Van Patigan. I swear that was the last time, I swear. Overall review. Overall, The Man in the Suit is a fantastic series, bringing a breath of fresh air into the analog horror landscape, and simultaneously bringing my favorite franchise into more of a horror genre than ever before. So yeah, it's really, really, really good. Whether you're here because you like Godzilla, analog horror, or even just stumbled into this video without knowing anything about either of those things, I suggest you turn off all the lights in your house, make sure all the doors are locked, turn on the TV, and start watching this series in the best way you can. In the dark. 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 By the way,
I've decided to make a big change, and it's not just my character, again. Over the past four and a half years, I've tried to make many different types of videos on this channel, to a variety of different success. Looking back, I've found that I've had the most fun and most success with making Godzilla videos. After thinking about this for a while, I have decided that this channel is going to be focused solely on Godzilla and other kaiju. Along with that, I don't think the name Smiley Face Studios will be used anymore. When I named this channel that, I wanted to make shorts and animated shows, which I later found out would be a lot harder than I thought it would be. The name just doesn't fit with the future of this channel, so I'd like to welcome all of you for the very first time to my channel, The King of Kaiju. More videos are coming, I swear. Here's a bit of a sneak peek to those which these are very quickly thrown together thumbnails that are not the final thumbnails. A collection video inspired by Meowser's video. A video exploring the kaiju of has -Been Hotel. A series of videos about the behind the scenes of Godzilla movies, starting with the first one, Godzilla 1954. And a Godzilla X-Kong theory.